All right, guys. Hey, uh, we're going to do a quick breakdown of a couple of different things here. Right here, you're looking at a breakout, simple breakout from behind the net, two swingers coming up the floor. Uh, this is a good play here. This guy's going to look back up the floor uh, because he's outnumbered in the situation two on four. He comes to play right up back through the middle, uh, the late joiner coming through the middle to high quality shot coming right down the pipe. It's a good look on a break out there. This here is going to be a four check. Uh, it's man to man here, but they can switch off after the man to man. Um, first four check, uh, a pressure is applied down low. Um, you see here 88 who's got there in the white skates is going to make a read to come down low and support. He sees that a backhand play is being made up the boards, uh, pinches it off along the corner boards here, engages in a board battle recognizes once now that he's kind of established possession in this board battle, he wants to go back with the puck. It's an easy play back, and it's a smart play uh, all off of a good um, offensive read. Here, uh, plays break it down in the own zone. No need to take a rush shot here. We're going to take it back into the own zone. Look to make what's called a midcourt breakout. Two players swinging with speed coming down, and you're going to see why this is important. Instead of going all the way back with the puck, you come midcourt, you generate some speed, and then there's a chance here for a backdoor play with two swingers coming, uh, and it's a it's a really simple play uh, that you can make just by regrouping midcourt. Okay, so puck turnover here, uh, pass is thrown into the corner, first guy makes a read, he's going to forecheck hard here, uh, forces the play around the boards, um, two guys pinch on one player here, uh, this is a little bit high risk, but once that play is made, uh, that aggressiveness does pay off. A good one-on-one -on -one move here starts to a two-on-one -on -one just through some aggressive forward checking that can be um, beneficial to, to making a play. Once again, here's a regroup. Comes back half court. Picking his head up, number 72 is going to make a play here. Back down the same place. He makes an off-puck cut. So after he makes his pass, he follows his pass, which gets him into a position in the middle of the floor. A pick set for him. It's a good another middle-of-the-court shot, high slot. Um, in a position that we can be in uh, to make good plays when we regroup and then make a good pass off the puck. So once again, here's some more off-puck movement. Two easy swings coming down the boards as well. Here's a rush off the draw. We're coming in. We're two on two with two back checkers here. So we have to understand what the numbers are. So once again, the puck is thrown back, realizing the numbers aren't in our favor. 17 throws it across. Now numbers are in our favor. There's going to be an off-puck cut here. It's three on three instead of two two on four, essentially. Puck comes across the rink. It's a good look. It's something that makes sense anytime we're outnumbered. Uh, once again, we're coming back behind our own net here. Plays good move out here just to regroup. You can come out with a lot of speed. You can take a break, come back, and then reset on the swing. Right here is a good example of four checking and reading the play. Low guy here, who's on the right, is going to see here. Puck's been thrown back. You pinch off the forehand. So now as the forehand's being pinched off, he wants to force his player to make a play on the backhand. Now that the that there's going to be some commotion behind the net, he jumps in, chases out, causes a turnover. That's a really smart play if you're face guarding the guy from behind the net. If uh, you can force him to his backhand and jump the route a little early. Here we have uh, an example of uh, just a little bit, um, not, not, not enough off-puck movement. There's two guys basically standing posted on either side of the corner boards. They can't get out of the zone because the man-to-man -man coverage is too tight. So they're looking for a pass essentially the entire time, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's not beneficial. It's not going to get anything done for us in the long term because basically the entire time, we're looking one-on-one uh, -on -one here. So here's an example of a, P, a power play delay. Uh, smart move is made here. He's tripped. He looks back into his own zone, the black team. Instead of taking a look towards the net, he immediately re recognizes that the penalty's been called. He's going to move the puck backwards into his own zone. Here, as the puck's being moved backwards into his own zone, it allows the coach to put out his correct power play unit plus one. So here, anytime you see a delay, you're going to move it back into our own zone so we can consider regrouping and getting into our uh, into our correct setup. So as, as we're walking the play up the floor, 
we're just starting to get our personnel in the right place. We work the play out from being an umbrella, so three out top, two down low, and then we can start to work what's called a two-man game. You isolate one player, so the player is isolated right there, and you essentially create small two-on-ones all the way across the floor trying to essentially find a mismatch or a one-timer. The mismatch isn't there anymore. The Newman player in gold is playing a little bit too high, so they recognize this. They're going to reset it. They're going to try and work it from down low, and now a little bit of off-puck movement shores up some space on the floor. Now, with all this time being spent into the offensive zone and some movement being made between players, essentially start to set a little bit of confusion here for the Newman side. So once again, two-man game. You see here they've isolated bottom right corner. High slot now is a little bit of a triangle, which outnumbers three on two, which essentially creates small two-on-ones throughout the floor, which is what we want to do every time. So here, Newman throws it back off the draw. They're walking up the floor here on a power play. So essentially, the power play units are going to be uh, looking here in a box while the black team here is looking to play aggressively to the wings to prevent cross-crease passes. If you play aggressively to the wings, both the top man and the low guy have to come to get down together in order to make, uh, make life difficult for the power play here. So once this play has been made, you can rag out the time. And you'll hear me use the term rag out quite a bit. So as soon as the puck is turned over, we have to be looking to, to essentially create chances for ourselves on the, on the PK. So there you saw puck was one in the corner, wrapped around the boards as an offensive chance. So now, once again, the power play, because of the back check here and because of the last chance taken, has to reconsider. They turn back in towards their own zone. And they're going to have to try and regroup against this PK. The PK is aggressive. The PK is putting pressure on where they can, as you can see right there. It's causing the breakout for the power play to be a little bit more you know, static. It's causing it to be a little bit tougher for them uh, to make plays that they want to. So right here, top guy gets hung out to dry a little bit too far. We like you to stay home in that situation to kind of prevent that from happening. But a turnover is caused because the wing pressure is so hard. Once again, 19 is going to look, wrap it around the boards to kind of look for an outlet pass. But that play is cut off there. So we got to look up and make smart plays before we just try and wrap out. So now, pressure is heavy again. Comes out to the wing. Top guy and low guy are looking to block shots, block passing lanes, and put pressures on the wings whenever we're on the PK. It's an ill advised shot. We get a block there. And they get out of the zone. So we always have to remember that that top guy is extremely important about putting pressure on the wings. So right again, here on the power play, running a, essentially an umbrella that can shift between uh, a umbrella, so a 1-3 or a 2-2. Two, two. So pucks moved up high here. We go from a box back to an umbrella. The man's parked out in front. There's support for the man low uh, on the right side. He walks back out. Pucks moved back out high. They're looking to isolate somebody, to put somebody on an island, essentially, in order to make a two-on-one down low or to make a two-on-one up high. So now we overload. So the umbrella becomes a little bit of, a, of an overload down low. They find the two-man game. They find some space. They move the puck across rink. And there's a whole lot of space for this guy to take a shot. He takes a shot back door. Puck is tipped. And you'll see right here into the net. So that's something to take consideration of. It's something to think about. You go from down low. The puck can be run from down low, moved out high, moved across. Because once you start to overload one side of the floor, it opens up a ton of space for uh, a shot. So that's it for this time. Thanks a lot for you guys watching.